So welcome, 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 everybody. It's evening uh, here in Panama as we get started. Uh, coming to you live from uh, Proyecto Horizontal, Sofia. Horizontal project, that's what they call tall, tall buildings here. <laughs> so we have got so much to uh, go over tonight. I want to get right into it. Um, you know, we're going into some very, very serious uh, times, not only economically, but in so many other, at so many other levels, really. And uh, we really need to be prepared. That's why I'm putting this uh, uh, discussion on tonight. Yeah, we're going into some very, very serious times. I'm going to be talking about the economics of things, finances, business related but really, all of that means nothing if we're not uh, straight with the Lord, right? Uh, we've got to be walking with the Holy Spirit with a clean heart and be the light in this dark world. Or uh, what we do economically or financially or business-wise isn't going to mean a hill of beans difference, right? So uh, we'll bear that in mind. So let me just jump right into it and uh, get going here. I want to go through some slides. Okay, so we're going to talk about three things. Um, so like I mentioned, uh, there are many other things uh, equally important for our survival, mainly our soul and our spirit, but we're going to talk about economics tonight. Uh, there's only so much time. We'll be getting into the other things on, on other venues, other platforms. But uh, this is critical. There are so many people that just simply do not have a clue what we're walking into, right? It's uh, the shit is about to hit the fan, and most of the people are standing right in front of the fan, okay? <laughs> and you know what that means, okay? So I've been blowing the horn as hard as I can on these things, and frankly, most people just ignore it, you know, and that's... I guess the way things are this in this world, that's the way that's just the way things are. But there are so many watchmen out there blowing the horn. But I always try to go beyond that. I want to be much more than a watchman. I want to bring solutions. And so that's what tonight is all about. So I would encourage you to uh, get out a notepad and a pen. You might want to jot down a couple of things as we go. Uh, give you a point of reference on where to go for more information to do some further study on some of the topics that we bring up. Much of this, I'm sure many of you have uh, seen to some degree or another. And tonight, I'm going to pull it all together and uh, kind of do a deep dive on these three things that really we need for economic survival. I mean, things are really falling apart. This video uh, I put in your email today, uh, Robert Kiyosaki, America's getting wiped out. This is what's coming. I hope you, were, you saw the video. If not, you need to. Um, whether you think you know what's going on or not, this uh, really emphasizes the, the point and kind of sharpens the sword that uh, tells us that uh, we need to pay attention. People need to sit up straight, open their eyes, pay attention. And not only that, but they need to get busy doing something. All right. So first of all, most people aren't aware that America is now bankrupt. Um, they're having a hard time selling uh, U.S. debt at the auctions. You know, typically, uh, I don't know how often it is. I think it's once a month. They have a, uh, the Treasury has an auction where they, they auction off uh, debt. Um, treasury notes, bonds, and uh, that's what finances the government. And um, just in one recent auction that I know of a couple months ago, people were not buying. I'm sorry, countries, nations were not buying the debt. And they had to keep raising the interest rates that they were offering. So not only are they selling the debt with interest that, uh, that American taxpayers have to pay back, um, but they're having to raise the interest to get other countries interested in buying it. Now, what happens 
when nobody buys that debt. Did you ever think about that? Let's let's talk about it just briefly. If no one's buying the debt, that means the government is not financing its operations. That means it's going to have to not pay somebody. Who do they not pay? Government workers? Lay them off? Do they start closing down national monuments and uh, museums and uh, arts and education? Do they stop paying uh, benefits, social security, disability, veterans benefits? Who do they stop paying? Now think for a minute. What happens when they, when they cut off the EBT welfare cards that people use to buy groceries, sucking off the tit of the government? Who are, who are most of these people that are using the EBT cards? Okay, I think you know. Most of these people live in the ghetto. And you know the culture in the ghetto. Um, I mean, it's just fact. And when they can't get their uh, groceries and liquor and uh, cigarettes, what do you think is going to happen? Just think about it for a minute. I'm not going to spell it out. I'm sure you know very well. America's going to burn. Okay? Yeah. So there are some very, very serious things ahead for us, folks. And the fact that America is now bankrupt, uh, it's absolutely astounding. Um, currently, our debt to GDP, that's gross domestic product, GDP is the total value of all of the production in the country. Everything that's produced, goods and services, GDP. Think of everything that's produced. It's a huge figure. Debt to GDP is now in the vicinity of 130%. Meaning if all we did was use taxpayer money to pay off the debt, that it would take about a year and a half just to do that if 100% went into the debt, okay? Um, of all production, that means nobody got paid, goods and services didn't get paid, 100% of the revenue goes to pay that. 130% is unsustainable, and that does not include uh, unfunded mandates like future liabilities for Social Security, Medicare, other welfare programs, okay? Those future liabilities are not accounted for in the current day accounting. So look at America as the Titanic. It's going down financially and, and we're in for a, a, an awful rough ride. So tonight is gonna be your chance to get on a lifeboat while the lifeboats are still available. If you know the story of the Titanic, only a small portion of the passengers got into a lifeboat, okay? So this is serious business, right? These are just a few videos that you can find yourself. Look them up on YouTube. Uh, Jim Rickard, I met him at a conference in Chile a few years ago. Um, ex, uh, economic advisor to the CIA, He's been uh, a very high-level advisor uh, in other institutions. He's an author of many books. Um, uh, the Currency Wars is one that comes to mind. Very sharp guy. He's a guy that knows what's going on. We need to listen to him. Um, Robert Kiyosaki, I think you all know who he is. He's an ex-Marine uh, helicopter pilot. Got shot down three times, got out of the military, and he built an empire worth several hundred million dollars. Did he do that by following the status quo? You know that you know his Rich Dad Poor Dad book. Absolutely fascinating. He talks about his uh, poor dad, who was a highly educated uh, uh, university professor, a scholar from Northwestern University with a PhD in North, from Northwestern University in Illinois. And he says, he didn't know nothing. <laughs> My poor dad didn't know nothing. 
All right. We need to listen to Robert Kiyosaki. He's the one that did the video I sent you today in the email. So again, listen to it if you haven't already. Um, what's this guy's name? I forget. Ben, Pat, David, uh, the guy in Tell Your Family to Prepare. He's, uh, I might have gotten his name wrong a little bit, but he's an immigrant from Iran. He landed in the U.S. legally with something like $300 in his pocket. Got a job on Wall Street, learned the money game. He himself has an empire worth several hundred million dollars. Self-made, immigrant. And you know what's interesting? It These days, you see successful people, many of them are immigrants. They come here with a dream, understanding the value that America has. Americans generally, uh, euphemistically speaking, are fat and lazy. And we, we, don't under, we don't appreciate what we've had all our lives. And we squandered it. All right? And you look around, a lot of these Americans, they spend most of their time at the buffet at Western Sizzlin rather than doing any research or study or preparing or building or starting a business or things that are going to help their family. All right? And that's what's most interesting for me, living abroad. Um and others like me, the expats, we can see things much more clearly the way they are back home. When you're back home, you don't see things quite so clearly because you're right in the middle of it. You know, so it's very interesting. But uh, he's a fascinating guy. I highly encourage you to look him up. Um, Warren Buffett, why 2% succeed and 98% don't? Okay. I want to talk tonight about being in that 2%. All right, but it doesn't come easy. You have to work. You have to learn. You have to study. You have to apply what you need, what you learn. You have to be willing to fail. So um, uh, looking at uh, Lena Petrova over here on the bank deposit, she's, she's got a fascinating channel. Uh, telling you things about the economy and, and largely on the banking industry that you're not going to hear anywhere else, okay? Peter Schiff, I met him at the same conference. I met uh, Jim Rickard. Um, I knew Peter's father, Erwin Schiff. You may have uh, heard of Erwin. He basically died handcuffed to a hospital bed because he was in prison for, for printing books that were against the narrative, Telling the truth about the Federal Reserve. I had met with Pete, uh, uh, not only Peter, but his dad, Erwin, uh, when he was in Las Vegas, spent some time with him. Um, and Peter's out sounding the horn, okay? So these are voices that have done, they've walked the walk, okay? They're not just talking. They're, they're walking the talk. And these are voices that we need to listen to. Here's another one. Uh, Michael Bordenaro, I've just recently uh, become a fan of his channel in, uh, in YouTube, and uh, he's, he's sounding the bell. You know, Big Macs in some cities, 18 bucks. You know, everyone's going broke. People have stopped paying their bills. Businesses are going broke. Uh, in that particular video, he talks about, depending on where you are, 40 to 50 percent of small businesses are unable to pay next month's rent. Can you believe that? What's going on? Uh, just yesterday, I think it was, Red Lobster announced that they were closing 120 stores and filing bankruptcy to try and preserve the rest. Bankruptcy protection. See if they can somehow rejuvenate the remaining stores that they don't have to close. So um, there are some serious things going on, folks. And uh, uh, we have to get out of la-la land, okay? Things are not normal. Things are not okay. And... Uh, 
they're about to get a lot worse, a lot worse. I just heard a prophetic word from the Lord today, just moments ago. And the, the Lord said in the word, a barrel of oil is going up to $200. Not sure when, but it's going up to $200. Okay. Um, I remember about two years ago, when uh, several years ago, when, when Trump was in office and the United States was uh, the largest energy producer in the world, they had to pay people to take oil away. They weren't selling it. They were paying people to take it away because it costs money to shut down a pump. If you've got an oversupply, it costs money to not to shut down an oil pump, but to get it back up. And it takes a long time to do so. It's very complicated and expensive. So they were not going to shut down the oil uh, uh, rigs. Um, they were just paying people money to take the oil off their hands because they were having too much. And we're going from that just recently to $200 a barrel oil. And, and if you saw the video, you know how important that is because oil affects everything. Transportation, plastics, uh, raw supplies, cost of goods. Uh, it goes into everything. So these are things that are going on many people are not aware of. Um, go to Michael Bordenaro's uh, uh, channel on YouTube and uh, do some research. Now, here's one that just breaks my heart. Just breaks my heart. People cannot afford their pets anymore. So what do they do? Most of them put them in a shelter. Shelters are overcrowded, so it's just a matter of time before the, the pet has to be put down. And I'm an animal lover, and I got six dogs. And uh, it just brings tears to my eyes to think of how people are having to be separated because of ec economics. It's crazy. This is what's going on in Venezuela right now. Uh, people are leaving the country. They're leaving their animals behind with no one to take care of them. Okay? So that's, that's a whole nother story. That's a whole nother need. So as these things are going around, um, we have to be in good position economically, right? We have to be not only for ourselves to survive, but we have to be in position to help other people because we're going to be buffeted with situations that, quite frankly, are just going to be overwhelming. And we won't be able to help everybody but we need to be able to help somebody. And if we can't help ourselves, how the hell are we gonna do that? So point number one, one of the three things that we need to do, we need to manage debt properly, okay? And that means eliminating bad debt, debt that's making you poor, credit cards, unsecured lines of credit, things like that, auto loans, loans on the boat, mortgages. We'll talk about mortgages in a minute. But there's bad debt that makes you poor, and there's good debt that can make you rich, right? If you can borrow money at one interest rate and put it to use productively, so that you can generate more than what you're paying, that's good debt. Put it into assets that will generate cash flow for you. All right, that's what Robert Kiyosaki teaches in, in all of his uh, material, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and, and all of the courses he does. He's built a, a multi-hundred million dollar empire accumulating good debt and investing it where it's generating cash flow for him. Okay, so... We have to understand there's good debt and there's bad debt. On the bad debt, we have to get rid of it. That's that's number one. And to the best that we can, accumulate good debt and put that to use. Okay, well, where do you put it to use? Well, there's places where you can learn to do that. And that's what I'm here for. All right, looking at debt, 
This is from the third quarter of 2023, last year. The average balances uh, uh, across the nation, and of course that'll vary widely based on area and and uh, economic strata and so forth. But uh, the average mortgage debt was two hundred forty-four thousand, almost uh, two hundred forty-five thousand. Uh, the HELOCs, that's a home equity line of credit. All right. So in addition to the mortgage, a lot of people have a line of credit worth $42,000 balance, not counting interest, of course. Auto loans. I couldn't imagine auto loans at $23,000. My goodness gracious. I must be stuck back in the 70s. When I think of a used car, I'm thinking 5000 7000 <laughs> But I, uh, that's not anymore. Not anymore. No, not anymore. So that's a that's a whopping number itself. Um, credit card debt. We know about student loans are killing students because they can't find jobs in this economy. So um, uh, you add all that up. The average is three hundred fifty five thousand dollars. Now, that does not include the per capita responsibility for the national debt. Now, the last I heard, it was some time ago, it was 65000 for every man, woman, and child in the country. And I'm sure by now it's at least past 70000 So add 70000 to three fifty-five, you're looking at over, you know, $420,000 in debt. Now, when the average salary is fifty dollars to $70,000, how are you ever going to pay that off? Just answer answer that. That's a rhetorical question. How are you ever going to pay that off? You're not. So you're a debt slave and you're under the thumb of the creditor. So not only is this a financial problem, this is a, a moral, uh, physical and spiritual problem as well. OK, so you see how serious this is. Now, Here's a lady I just stumbled across. Here's a video on YouTube you need to find and, and take a look at if you have a mortgage. Okay. The title of her video is, You're Not Poor, You're Getting Robbed. And boy, does she make a presentation on how mortgages work. Okay. I think we all know that a 30 year more on a 30 year mortgage, you're going to pay for your house a minimum of three times just based on the payments and the interest. Okay. So, and that doesn't count a whole slew of other things we won't get into here. But the point of her video is if you just paid a $10,000 chunk against your mortgage every once in a while, you would save tens and tens of thousands of dollars in interest. That 300% uh, payment schedule would go down dramatically. Okay, so if you've got a mortgage, I highly encourage you to look up this video on YouTube. You're not poor, you're getting robbed. All right, and this just falls right into line with how I've been railing against the bankers for years now uh, for so many reasons. Uh, the banks are not your friend, okay? The banks are your enemy. And the way the laws are, if your bank ever goes insolvent, guess who gets to bail them out? You do. No more government bailouts. They're doing bail-ins, which means they're going to take money from their depositors to make the bank solvent again. Isn't that sweet? And from the... Uh, uh, Graham Rudman Act of a few years ago, the laws have also changed where once you make a deposit in the bank, that's no longer your money legally. You can't lay claim to it. Now, as long as everything's uh, functioning, hunky-dory, okay, the bank will likely you know, let you make withdrawals. But even today, banks are refusing clients access to their own money. I've had a number of clients want to send out a large amount, 100,000, 150,000, 200,000, and the banks refuse to do it. Now, we all know about 
the cash situation, it's harder than hell to get cash out of the bank because they don't have cash. And they ask you 100 questions as though you're a criminal of some sort for asking for your own money. We're not talking about that. We're talking about people wanting to make investments, move their money, and they won't let them. So that's a whole nother story. But if you've got a mortgage, you need to look at this uh, at this video. OK, I'm going to move on. So as it relates to eliminating debt, many of you are aware that we have a page on natf.world is a website. There's a button uh, labeled services and then a drop down menu comes up and you can find eliminate debt. And you'll find a page with uh, these three videos and more. Uh, but these are these are important. OK, um, the one on the right beat the bankers under the fraud. I have to say, I think is probably one of the most borrowed, downloaded, stolen videos that's reposted on other people's channels that I know of. I've seen this appear on various channels uh, over time. <laughs> People love the video. If you haven't seen it, it's a plaintiff alleging fraud in his mortgage, and he has the banker on the witness stand in the courtroom. And the plaintiff's attorney is grilling the banker with questions, putting him into a corner where he has to admit the fraud. And when you listen to this, uh, this, uh, conversation, this grilling, you will clearly understand the nature of the fraud being done by the banks on every single mortgage, every single credit card. They use um, funny accounting to uh, turn assets, uh, turn liabilities into assets. And that just doesn't fly in the uh, accounting world among other things, which uh, we won't get into today, but that's uh, that's one video you have to see, along with the others, okay? So on our Eliminate Debt page, uh, you're going to really have a chance to open your eyes and get to the core issue as to why it's important to eliminate debt. You have been fraudulently induced into signing agreements without full disclosure, Lack of full disclosure, it's a violation of the Truth in Lending Act, um, among many other things, okay? So you have been criminally induced into signing a fraudulent agreement, and the judge will say, well, you signed this, this agreement to pay, didn't you? Why aren't you paying? And the answer is no, I did not sign that with fully informed consent. I was fraudulently induced into signing a defective document that does not meet the uh, uh, characteristics and requirements of the Truth in Lending Act, TILA. And so, no, that's not my signature. That's my handwriting. That's my name. But a signature implies consent. You did not consent to all the things that they failed to disclose to you. Okay. So, being that those elements are, those debts are fraudulent, they need to be eliminated. And we have the process to do that, okay? So the next thing is, point number two is, of course, you have to reduce expenses. And this is pretty obvious. Eliminate unnecessary subscriptions. Not too long ago, I went through my PayPal account just to check on all the automatic payments that I had going out. And I discovered one after another. First of all, I didn't even know what the hell they were. I'm thinking to myself, what is this I'm paying $30 a month for? And then I came across others that I recognized, but then I realized I wasn't even using these things anymore. And so by the time I got done, I had to eliminate, geez, it must have been close to a dozen subscriptions I was paying for that I didn't need to. So you mm -hmm. might be in the same position. All right. So these are obvious things, you know, buy in bulk, Sam's Club, Costco, Price Smart. And in doing so, you'll build up your pantry, which you need to have anyway. You need to have backup supplies. 
Uh, you've heard people talk about prepping and, and all that. I don't need to rehash that. But go, going into the uh, times that we're leading into, if there's riots in your neighborhood and your stores have to close down, what are you going to do? Okay. Or if worse things happen and the supply chain breaks down, and I can name off so many other possible scenarios, buy in bulk, build up your pantry, get some uh, get some uh, prepping going on there, find local sources of the food that you need. Just the other day, I was fortunate, I have a neighbor who has an avocado tree. And man, did they have a harvest. My goodness gracious, I never saw so many avocados. And they were huge, like grapefruit. I mean, these were, they probably weighed about two pounds each. And uh, my neighbor called me up, hey, Mark, we got all these avocados. You want some? <laughs> and I go, heck yes, I do. But bring them on over, you know. Uh, and I paid for them, like two bucks a piece. But, you know, compared to the grocery store, that's a bargain, especially for the size they were, you know. And uh, why couldn't you do that if you have more than you need of something, you know? Uh, evaluate the luxury items and the comforts, the comfort foods. You know, I, 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 I've always enjoyed a nice scotch whiskey and a glass of wine and, uh, you know, expensive uh, snacks, pistachios or whatever, uh, Serrano ham and imported cheese. And uh, I've, I've always enjoyed my happy hours, but I got to thinking about it and especially with my health, I started thinking, you know, I could probably cut back on some of these things. And, uh, you know, maybe instead of the Serrano ham and, and the imported cheese, I might have uh, some celery and dip or something, you know. Uh, but, you know, if you're getting tight, these are things you have to look at. Grow your own food. Uh, hell, I remember back in my high school days, me and my buddies, we, we grew our own. We went up in the hills. We are growing our own, and we saved a lot of money. Growing your own what? <laughs> well, it wasn't vegetables, I'll put it that way. Uh, <laughs> but 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 you can do the same thing. You might say, well, geez, you know, I don't need so many carrots and tomatoes. Well, no, you don't need to necessarily grow it just for yourself. Grow it for your neighbors and it gives you something to barter with. Okay. The neighbor, the neighbor has uh, you know, got eggs going with some chickens, you know, down the road. Maybe you need some eggs to swap your carrots out for some eggs. All right. I mean, these are things we need to start doing because they need to be done before you need it. All right. You need to have these things in place before uh, you know, the shit hits the fan. Okay. And the last one I have here is get straight with the IRS. Now what does that mean? Get straight. Get straight with the law. Are you an elected public official working in Washington, D.C.? If not, you probably don't have an income tax li liability. Are you a Jamaican uh, rum distiller or distributor involved in alcohol, tobacco, or firearms? If not, then you're not probably engaged in a taxable activity. So you need to understand who's liable and who's not. And you've been lied to, you've been brainwashed, you've been led to believe certain things that are not true. And so I've created this elephant gun document that with one shot destroys the IRS. This one document incorporates various levels of the law and lawful application that this one document will just wipe out the IRS. Okay, now this particular video is on the Exit Babylon channel. It is uh, a little bit long. It goes through the entire document line by line. So if you really want to know what's in it, you can look at this video, but underneath the video in the description box, I have a link to an ebook that I put together that you can probably read through in five or 10 minutes. Okay, save a little bit of time, unless or until you really want to do a deep dive with the video. And then it'll show you where to uh, and how to get the document. Okay, 
So income taxes is one area that you simply, uh, let's just say you can reduce those. <laughs> All right. That's kind of a soft way of putting it, but we'll leave it at that. All right. So the third thing is that you need to increase cash flow. This is where a lot of people really fall down. They just, they just don't do well. You know, uh, so many people are uh, of the employee status and that's fine. You know, a lot of people love their jobs are getting paid well and uh, you know, it's a good arrangement, but with the economy, what it is, you have to be thinking, how long is that paycheck going to be there for you? I mean, you have to seriously evaluate it. Sure, it's there this week, this month, maybe for the rest of the year. But the way things are going, just start asking yourself, what if? What if? And then once you start thinking about what if, ask yourself, what's my plan? Where do I go from here? So I have always been an advocate for developing multiple streams of income. All right. If one starts to dry up a little bit, you've got the others to help get you through. If you're totally dependent on one source of cash flow, that's a dangerous position to be in. You don't know what could happen. If that dries up overnight, then what? Okay. So multiple streams is highly important. Learn passive investing, all right? There are a multitude of opportunities where you can invest passively and start generating, you know, building up a, a nest egg uh, with compounding or monthly income. Um, there's a lot of them out there. They're all over the place. Now, be careful because there's a lot of scams and uh, you have to kind of know what to look for in the scams. I don't think anybody that I know or can think of has lost more money than I have chasing some of these scams. Or not always are they scams, but they're really good business concepts and business plans with good people behind it, but the damn regulators step in and shut them down, especially in the blockchain industry, you know? I can't tell you how much I've lost uh, with excellent programs that have been shut down by regulators. So you got to be careful there and really do your due diligence. Don't just dive into things. All right. Work from home. Um, remote work. That's getting to be a big thing. Ever since the pandemic, people don't want to go back to the office. And employers are saying, you know what? This isn't a bad deal. I can keep my expenses down. And... Uh, hopefully get just as much, if not more productivity out of my workers. Okay. There's actually websites popping up that offer remote work opportunities. All right. A lot of activity in this area on uh, LinkedIn. So that's something you can investigate. Side hustles. That's something you can do. Let's talk about side hustles. Use your imagination as to what you can do. Do you live in an apartment complex? All right, you got a lot of neighbors around you that have dogs and pets. All right, they go to work, leave their pet in the house all day. Why don't you come up with a, a side hustle to, you know, walk their pet a couple times a day while they're at work and uh, they'll love you for it, you know? Um, you know, that's just something real simple you can do. Um, Fiverr is a website for uh, part-time gigs, you know? Um short-term gigs. You have a good voice? Maybe you could do voiceovers for uh, uh, advertisements, radio, videos. There's a lot of people out there that uh, that do that. They just uh, know how to use the intonation of their voice to come across very sincere and credible and enthusiastic and energetic. And uh, in fact, I had a girlfriend. That's what she did. She she That's all she did was voiceovers for ads. So there's a lot of things you can do. Uh, think about what you like to do, what you're good at. You can you can find some remote work doing side hustles. Um, I've always been an advocate for starting a business that'll generate a, a continual flow of cash flow for you. 
In fact, uh, Robert Kiyosaki, you probably have seen his cash flow quadrant that breaks down um, cash flow into four categories, a quadrant. First category is you're an employee, you get a paycheck. Second category is that you're self-employed and uh, now basically you have some freedom with your time. You can schedule your time as you like, but as soon as you stop working, you're unemployed. Take some time off, you're unemployed. Go on vacation, you're unemployed. Your cash flow stops. So the third quadrant is to have a business that takes care of itself and continues without you being a business owner. That's the third quadrant. Then the fourth quadrant is having investment income where you don't need to maintain a business, but your investments are generating cash flow for you. And that's really where everybody needs to be. So it's kind of a graduated scale. You go from employee to self-employed to business owner to uh, investor. So that's his cash flow quadrant that he teaches. All right. But starting a business, um, there's so much that can be done in those areas. OK, that can be an Internet based business. And that's the way to go these days. I mean, the Internet affords us so many opportunities. We can reach out to a thousand people in a day and never leave your bedroom. I mean, whoever thought that would even be possible 20 years ago? or even 10 years ago, okay? Uh, I think back on my own evolution in terms of uh, technology, and I've always been behind the curve. You know, I, I was two or three years late getting my first laptop computer or uh, moving from cassettes to CDs. I remember those days. <laughs> uh, so um, it's just uh, interesting stuff, but internet just creates so many opportunities. All right. And we can help you in all of these areas. All right. So um, if we move on to into the business club under the services tab on the NATF website, we have a millionaire mentors program. One of many benefits you can join for uh, what is it? 50 bucks one time once you're a member of the business club. They'll show you how to start a business from zero. You don't have any idea what to do. You don't have any money to start. You don't have a website. You don't have anything to sell. No problem. The Millionaire Mentors will help you organize all that for yourself and put you in business. All right. Step by step. It's a fantastic program. Okay. Maybe you have an existing business and you need to scale it up. Right. That's what I'm trying to do. Scale it up. You know, get the increased exposure, get uh, get to the right markets, open up new markets. Um, there's a lot of people that have a business not doing real well with the economy right now, and they need to scale it up. The Millionaire Mentors Program is geared just for that, along with many of the other benefits in the business club that will help you do that. OK, I'm not going to get into all that right now. That's why I give you the web page. You can go and find it and do some investigation if that's of interest to you. Okay. Um, it'll help you find a business if you have no idea what you want to do. Um, there are numerous passive investing opportunities. Okay. So the business club has all of these things in, uh, included in the membership, access to various resources, various other programs. Some of the other programs do have an additional cost, but it's not much, uh, not much at all. And, uh, you know, I included save a business. Remember the slide we did where uh, 120 uh, Red Lobster stores are closing? Well, um, in uh, Molinaro's, uh, one of his other videos, he talked about the fact that 40, well, I mentioned it, 40 to 50% of small businesses can't afford rent next month. All right. There's a lot of businesses on the verge of closing. And what does that do? That has a ripple effect through the entire economy. The employers, um, the employees, the suppliers, you know, the local service providers, all right, the local bank the uh, advertising people, 
uh, it's just a ripple effect on the economy. So uh, this might very well help save a business from having to close their doors. Okay. And that's important. I mean, small business is the heartbeat of America. And this is what keeps most families afloat. So when small business starts to go down, small families are going down with the ship. So think about the impact of what's going on in the economy. This is very personal. It's a very personal level. One business that I'd like you to take a look at is probably the simplest business I've ever seen. So simple. It's, it's the beauty, the power is in the simplicity. Okay. I set up this website, coffeewithmark.biz. It's got a number of uh, presentations and various information. If you're looking for a business, you need to go and take a look at it. Why? Because in this business, there's no selling. Oh, I'm not a salesperson. I can't do that. I don't want to be a salesperson. We don't want salespeople. We want people just to taste this coffee. It's fantastic. In fact, I have one sitting in front of me right now. Um, it sells itself. The market is huge. 200 million cups of coffee consumed every day by most Americans. And what's that? That's over 6 billion with a B cups of coffee every month. It's not too hard to find people who like coffee. And when, when we can present a much higher quality premium brand gourmet coffee, it's a no brainer. Okay. Plus it has extra health benefits. Isn't that wonderful? In fact, just today, I was talking with a friend of mine. She has some health problems. She's losing weight. Uh, she's got, you know, a few years ago, she had to have a kidney removed. And she's been holding on pretty good ever since then. But lately, she's just not been feeling well. Well, I've got her drinking this, uh, this coffee with cordyceps. And she says today, Mark, you know what? I had some coffee this morning. And I wasn't feeling very good. So I had some coffee. And after I had the coffee, I started feeling better. And you'll find out more about that on the website if you care to look. Um, it's really a superior product, and you can be in business for $49 plus some samples to, to try for yourself and then give away, and you're in business. How many coffee drinkers could you find, uh, you know, in the next couple of weeks, people that you know? In this business plan, you only need about... 17 coffee drinkers to make an extra thousand dollars a month would that help you will that be too hard giving away free coffee saying hey did you like it oh man that was great here here's where you can get some i'll send you some information so if you uh see the value of creating additional streams of income this should definitely be one of them okay so enough said, the information, uh, when you get to the website, just scroll down a little bit to presentations and there's an, a number of links you can click for different aspects of it, different parts of it, uh, whatever suits your desire, okay? Additional streams of income, mark this one down. This needs to be one of them, simple, huge market, okay? So, Additional services on the uh, 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 under eliminate debt page. All right. You can become a consultant working with us to help other people eliminate much of their debt. We have resources that will just knock your socks off in terms of the depth of information, the substance in the law, how the law is on our side. Um, how we can uncover the fraud, put the uh, fraudsters in a corner where they have no way out other than to say, uncle, I give. Okay. So you can become a consultant. What's nice about this business is that, again, kind of like coffee, almost everyone is over their head in debt. 
Ever, so many people are using their credit cards to live. And that's a dead end street. That's only going to go so far. And they can't turn around. They got to, we're the way for them to turn around with our Eliminate Debt program. Okay. Um, as a consultant, you can receive uh, quick cash up front. But what's nice is that there's a back end to it. And that can also create some residual monthly cash flow. All right. So uh, we can talk about that if that's something you want to talk about. So beyond that, go into uh, under services, the financial services, uh, going beyond uh, these particular points is uh, the first link there is a crypto friendly debit card. All right. We've got to get away from the banks. The banks are in a precarious position. They're eventually moving into CBDCs where they want to control your money. If they have a liquidity crisis, they're going to take your money uh, in a bail-in. Um, banks are not your friend. Start developing other economic financial services to replace your banking. And just keep a minimal profile in the banks as little as you can possibly get away with. I know you got to pay bills and do this and do that, but keep it minimal, all right? When the shit hits the fan, you don't want to have exposure there, all right? Crisis-proof investment options. This link will take you to a video um, that's going to present alternatives to the traditional markets. As the stock markets crash, the bond markets are already crashing, um, the stock markets are going up simply because they're being pumped up by inflated uh, dollars that are being printed into existence. And what happens when you put too much air in a balloon? I think you know. That's what's going to happen to the stock markets, to the traditional markets that everybody's invested in with their IRAs and their 401ks and this and that and the other, okay? Okay. It's going to be a bloodbath in the streets. So it will be blood in the streets. And so um, this link will present some alternatives to that for you. Okay. Now, if you're a business owner uh, or you want to start a business, uh, you need to know about private member associations. This particular link is going to take you to a webinar that I did, a webinar on demand, and it's going to get into all the details on that so you can learn about it and uh, get a better grasp of why uh, you need to move into the private and out of the public, okay? And there's some very specific meaning to that. In the same section, um, alt banking, again, talking about getting away from banks. You need a, a financial payment system that's not bank related. This alt banking option, many of you already know, is Kinesis. Kinesis deals in fiat. It deals in uh, Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, several other cryptos. It deals in um, uh, its own coin. It's got a couple. It's got its own uh, staking opportunity. And uh, what else? There's something else that I missed, but it, it's a payment system that has extreme flexibility and functionality. Uh, it's set up for businesses to make payments, multiple payments to multiple uh, vendors that you have to pay. That can be done. Um, so this link is going to take you to another page on the uh, MMG Capital website uh, with a video that will tell you more about that. You can investigate that. Uh, trust services, they can't take from you what you don't own, okay? Uh, we teach people to live like a king while being a pauper on paper, you know? I use the example. Who cares whose name is on the title of that mansion that you live in so long as you have the keys? Does it matter who owns it? Okay, so so many Americans have been brainwashed into, you know, uh, building their ego. Well, here's what I own. I got this car and I got that beautiful property and I got this vacation home and I got this and I got that. Get rid of all that. That serves you. That's that works against your interests. 
in the days when everybody's broke, you do not want to appear like you have money. You do not, and you know that very well. So self-directed IRA conversions. Uh, again, people are sitting in traditional markets with their IRAs. There's going to be a bloodbath. And if you don't do something with those before the shit hits the fan, you're going to be crying in your milk. Okay? So we have ways of doing some very creative things, fully legal, functional, and compliant. All right? That will... I'm just going to say, do some amazing things for you, okay, if you've got an IRA. So um, that's just kind of scratching the surface. We've got uh, this particular page under About Us um, has a list of most of our important links. This is all of our websites, webinars, ebooks, videos. Um, it's kind of your guide, all right? So if you want to, do some more research on any of these topics or look for others that might be related or helpful in some way. There's a bunch. I don't have time to get into it all. Uh, you can go investigate yourself. Okay. So do these things or you are screwed. I'm telling you, it's serious. This isn't, this isn't a sales pitch. This isn't uh, a hype session, you know, this is serious business, and you're either going to do these things or you're going to be sorry. I'm telling you right now, that's the way it's going to be. Do your own investigation. Look at some of those videos I gave you. These are the three things that you need to do in order to survive what's coming. Okay? So that being the case, if you would like to talk further about any of these particular topics, I'll be happy to speak with you. Um, but this is not for chit-chat. This isn't to talk about politics or what do I think about the election or what do I think about this or that or the other. This is for business. We're going to talk about um, your plan of action, how these services might be able to help you and move you forward in the direction of increased survivability, okay? That's the point of the discussion. It's a 30-minute discussion, so we, we got to get to the point and do it quick. And so that being the case, you have an opportunity to, um, uh, to meet with me personally. And uh, so thank you for your time and attention. Appreciate it very much. Um, these are important times and, um, we need to, we need to put things into gear, right? That's, that's where things are at. With that, I will, uh, leave it with you. Um, I'll put the recording up on, uh, uh, YouTube. I'll let you know if you want to go back and revisit it. Uh, you've got the links that I gave you, uh, in the slide presentations. Hopefully you made some notes. And uh, if nothing else, just browse around the uh, NATF website and you'll find uh, various things of, uh, of interest and help resources. And uh, we'll just go from there. So thank you for being here tonight. Appreciate it. And uh, look forward to uh, talking with you. Oh, I didn't mention, for you who are coffee drinkers, I want to send you a sample of our coffee. So... If you would like to receive a sample, send me your mailing address with a phone number and a reply to the emails you get from me. Just send a reply. It'll come back to me. And uh, I'd love to send you a sample, see what you think about it. We're doing some market testing. I'd like your opinion. And uh, if you like it, this is something we're doing as a fundraiser for uh, PCF World Missions Foundation, which is putting food and medicine in the hands of people who desperately, desperately need it. Right now, I've got people in Venezuela, they don't have food to put on the table. I just got word today and, uh, you know, things are tight for me too. So, so this is something we're doing to try and help others. So if you like coffee, send me your address and phone number and we'll send you some samples and uh, love to get your opinion. All right. So do that. And uh, I look forward to seeing you all in the next, uh, next session that we have. All right. That's all for now. Take care. God bless. Bye.